Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa sallallahu wa baraka ala ashraf al-anbiya wa mursaleen. Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. Alhamdulillah. We continue with the discussion around the Asr al-Thalith, the third uh, foundation, which is the foundation regarding the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the last lesson, we were discussing يعني, his hijrah, the legislation of hijrah, as well as the, specifically the hijrah of the Prophet وسلم, <coughs> and the hijrah of the companion. That the companion, عنهم, they made hijrah on two occasions. The first hijrah to Habasha, uh, in the initial sense, and the initial instance. And the second hijrah, the hijrah to uh, what was known at the time, Yathrib, what of course today is known as Al Medina. And along with that, we mentioned some of the ahkam in terms of hijrah itself and the encouragement of making hijrah and migrating to the land of obedience. So when you find yourself in the lands of disobedience, whether the disobedience be bid'ah, uh, kufr, shirk, general disobedience and sin, then the person seeks to go to a land better than that and have himself surrounded by people of khayr. Um And so, thereafter, Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad Abdul Wahab, he goes on to discuss, يعني, in relation to the seer of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَلَمَّا اشْتَقَرَّ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ عَمَرَ بِبَقِيَةَ الشَّرَائِرَ الْإِسْلَامِ And so, when they settled in Medina, he settled in Medina, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he then commanded with the other legislated acts in Islam. From zakah, salah, sawm, wal hajj, wal adhan, wal jihad, wa amr al-ma'roof, wa nahi al-munkar. Wa ghayr dhalik min shara'i al-islam. And so, he commanded with this legislated acts, whether it be zakah, salah, whether it be the fast, whether it be the hajj, the adhan, jihad, enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. And other than that, other than that from the legislated acts within Islam, and he spent 10 years doing this. He spent 10 years doing this. Yeah, so after Hijrah, the Prophet Sallallahu he lived for 10 more years, establishing Islam and the legislation. And so we understood, we studied previously how the Prophet Sallallahu he began his prophecy with the, the, the revelation of Iqra, and he began his uh, the Risala, his message, with Ya'yu uh, al-Mubdathir. And thereafter, as I mentioned, he made Hijrah, and then he was settled in Medina. And so the reference of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when settling there, and when traveling there, he traveled with, of course, the Muhajirin. And the inhabitants of Medina at the time were Ansar. Who in the message who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised. And these individuals, as Sheikh Zaid mentions, carry on tadhirun, kudum al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kullu yawm, farahin, wasabishirin. Falamma qadim al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al Medina, wasakarra biha. And so they they were anticipating yeah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam approaching. So the Ansar essentially were the individuals that had embraced Islam, accepted the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whilst they were inhabitants of Medina. So they were individuals that were residents of Medina. Thereafter, when news had reached that the Prophet ﷺ was approaching with the Muhajirin, then they anticipated their approach. When the companions, along with the Prophet ﷺ, settled in Medina, then he, alayhi salatu wasalam, then began to command with the other obligatory actions. Now, the other obligatory actions. And what was understood to be from the halal and the haram. They distinguish between the halal and the haram. 
and that which the people were in need of, in terms of how they lived. Likewise, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made clear and established يعني, the ahkam of al-bayah, yani buying and selling, commerce, trading, as well as establishing a clear distinction between bay and riba. Establishing a distinction between buying and selling as well as riba, usury. And that is not permissible that the person deals with riba. It's not permissible that the person deals with riba. And so with that, the ayat likewise were revealed to the Prophet Wasallam whilst being in Medina. And from these ayats revealed was the ayah where Allah Ta'ala states, Al Yawm Akamatu Lukum Dina kum watamamtu alaikum ni amati. What is these Lukum Islam Medina? That today I have perfected religion for you and completed my favor upon you and chosen Islam as your religion. I that this is this uh, signifying that this deen had been complete, had been completed with the Prophet Sallallahu by way of its message, by way of its, uh, its uh, sharia, its legislation, that is rendered complete with the Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. And likewise, Allah Ta'ala mentioned or revealed the ayah, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدَخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ وَالْفُوَاجَةِ فَصَفْبِهْ بِحَمْدِهِ بِصَفْبِهْ بِرَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Allah Ta'ala, he mentions يَعْنِ إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ And when the Nasr then when the victory of Allah comes, as well as the conquering, the conquering, the conquest, if I had Mecca, and you see the people, and you witness people entering into the deen, yeah, in droves, in large numbers. And so, glorify your Lord, glorify and praise your Lord, and seek his forgiveness, for indeed, he is the one that accepts the repentance. And so with this surah, no doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicates and illustrates the affair of the Fatwa Makkah, the conquering of Makkah, which we discussed last week. It's Kalalik. We discussed it last week, to some extent. And the Fatwa Makkah occurred when? Which year? Second? Second year of Hijr, Fatah Makkah. Mahmoud's not having it. Okay. I guess it's 10. Guess it's 10. 7, 8. 7, 7, 8, 10. Which one? It's not 2 for sure. It's not 2 for sure. 11. 8. 13. <laughs> it's the eighth, eighth year hijrah. I'm about to make the eighth year hijrah, barakallahu feekum. And what we can take from that as well, from the seerah of the Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, is that if you bear in mind, you remember that this affair of uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his dawah, began in Mecca. And they faced persecution. And they faced hardship. Whilst with all of that in mind, and the persecution, some of the, some of the companions were killed. And killed for no other reason other than their Islam. Other than they bore witness that there's no deity worthy of worship besides Allah. Now, and Muhammad is the, final, is the final messenger. This is the reason why they were killed. And even with all of this, Allah Ta'ala gave them victory. But he gave them victory, and it's, that's why we mentioned the year. Why? Because it's important to understand the amount of time that it took. A relative. So when you, when you understand that his da'wah began in Mecca, and he was in Mecca given that of how many years? 
13 years in Mecca giving da'wah to Tawheed. Then he went to Medina, and then we say eight years after that is when Allah Ta'ala gave them victory. Naam, mathematicians, how many years is that? 21 years. Uh, 21 years, Barakallahu Fiqh. And so if we look at, if we look at in terms of what we see now from trials and tribulations, what we take from that is that the Prophet Sallallahu first and foremost had patience, forbearance when it came to these trials and that the companions with him clung to his sunnah. They adhered to his sunnah. And through all of those characteristics, Allah Ta'ala gave them victory over these individuals. In a ritual with the mushrikeen. To the extent, as we mentioned the hadith last week, La hijrata ba'd al-fatih. There's no hijrah after fatih. In the fatih Mecca. Meaning that there's no hijrah to Mecca after fatih Mecca. Naam. I mean Allah Ta'ala gave them absolute victory to the Muslimin. And so when you see the people now, when they have trials and tribulations, whatever the trials and tribulations may be, that they seek to justify means of opposing the sunnah, opposing the tariq of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, in order to attain victory. Then you know that the, the, the calculation is misguided. Because if the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and his companions attain victory in this way, then they've shown us the manner in which we attain victory. And likewise as well with our intent, the intent of the individual must be an intent of the intent that anyone has for jihad. What's the intent of jihad? What's the, 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 the affair of jihad? The intent of jihad? When we say jihad, what is the intent of it? To make the kalima of la ilaha illallah illallah, the most high. That the kalima of tawheed is raised the highest. Anyone says whatever they want to say, but the Kalimah Tawheed, that's Abra Shay. The Kalimah Tawheed, that's the thing that is most significant. This is the, the, this, this is the main intent. And so the companions adhere to that. And Allah Ta'ala gave them victory. Now I'm by way of Fatima. And now. We understand with that as well that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, after establishing this affair of deen that he والسلام, thereafter passed away. He passed away shortly after completing the Hajj. Hajj al And he was referred to as that. Well, Hajj. And that Abu Bakr, عنه, he mentions the words, the poignant words within uh, the narration in Bukhari. Where he mentions, Ayyuh al Nas, Man kana ya'bud Muhammadan, fa'inna Muhammadan qad mat. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٍّ لَا يُمُوتُ And so, this was the time of no doubt, the companions, they lived amongst the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They took from every part of the revelation that they, when they heard from the Nabi Alayhi Salaatu Wasallam, they would act upon it. And then now, they're hearing that the, the, the revelation has come to an end. I, they, they hear the death of the death of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, the most beloved individual to them over and above anyone else. As this is what he's commanded with. It's from my iman that he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, was most beloved to them. And they hear of his death. And so and with that, no doubt, with his death alayhi salatu wasalam, was the inkita al wahi the cutting of a revelation, the end of the revelation. And so the people were, the companions were placed in a state of yani, confusion or states 
of difficulty and hardship. It was a trial for them. And so thus, Abu Bakr, who he stated these words, no doubt to bring about yeah, this certainty and to make it make it clear the sunnah of Allah wa ta'ala, with the creation. <coughs> and so he stated, Allah, Oh, mankind, whoever worshipped Muhammad, then indeed Muhammad has died. And whoever worships Allah, then Allah Ta'ala is alive and he has not died. And so thus, no doubt, with this, he affirmed the affair of Tawheed. He affirmed the affair of Tawheed. That this is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alone without partners. And so, thereafter, Muhammad Abdul Wahab, he goes on to mention as well. As for the deen and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then it remains. Right, this deen remains. So there's no good except that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just directed the ummah to it. There's no good that they exist except that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directed the ummah to it. وَلَا شَرْمْ إِلَّا حَذَّرَهَا مِنْهُ and there was no evil except that he وسلم, had warned against it. And the good which he which he called to and directed us to is Tawheed. And everything that Allah Ta'ala loves and is pleased with. And the shar, the evil that he warned against was shirk. And everything that Allah Ta'ala Hates. And so Allah Ta'ala sent him to mankind. So I said. And so what we understand from this Barakallah is again that this deen is one which is a deen which is coming. A religion which is Complete and not in need of yani, any addition. Hence, why, when you have the statement of uh, Malik, Imam Malik, where he mentions that whoever innovates in the deen of Islam, considering it to be yani, hasana, something good, that is as if he has stated that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fell into betrayal regarding the message. What is meant by that is that if a person says the bid'ah is good, they're doing an action, and it's a good innovation, then what they're saying in reality, in what is referred to as lisan al-hal, what, is, what it necessitates that they're saying, is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not give us the complete message. Because there's this, there's this hasana, there's this good that comes after that he not, didn't inform us about. And it's not comprehensive within his message. No doubt this is evil. A great evil. That a person may even hold something or hold a belief that necessitates that. And leads to that. And so this is why we understand that this deen is comprehensive and is calm, it's, it's perfect. And as mentioned by Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad Abdul Wahab, that there was no good except that he directed his ummah to him. So anything from good, anything that's good for you, you find it within the deen of Allah wa ta'ala, you find it within the nusus, you find it within the Quran, you find it within the sunnah. Impossible to find any khayr 
except that's in the Quran and the Sunnah. And it's impossible to find shar except that you find that the Quran and the Sunnah has warned us against it. And so, this is how we understand this affair of deen. I had a deen, as I mentioned, this is his deen. This is a deen which is amongst us today. And the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which is amongst us today. And the asas of the khayr, the base of the khayr is yeah, and the tawheed of Allah. Any good has to be rooted in tawheed. Why? Because this is why we're here. This is why we've been created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to worship him alone. And so, anything outside of that, a person is not fulfilling the purpose of his creation. And so, a person must establish Tawheed in Uluhiyah, yeah, in, in the worship, in his Rubiyah, the Lordship of Allah Ta'ala, in the Asma'a wa Sifat. And in the names and attributes of Allah, that he establishes Tawheed in all three of these categories. And that he seeks nearness to Allah Ta'ala, بِكُلَّ مَا يُحِبُّهُ وَيَرْضَى مِنْ الْأَقْوَالِ وَأَفْعَالِ وَالْأَعْمَالِ الظَّاهِرَ وَالْبَاطِنَ وَالْبُعْدِ كُلُّ الْبُعْدِ مِنْ كُلَّ مَا يُبْغِدُهُ اللَّهُ وَيَعْبَاهُ مِنْ شَرِّ الْأَقْوَالِ وَأَفْعَالِ وَأَعْمَالِ And so, as is mentioned, this affair of ibadah is that we seek near to Allah in everything that He loves and is pleased with. From speech and actions. Whether they be actions which are apparent or actions which are hidden. And that we free ourselves and we distance ourselves from everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. And that we reject evil from speech and actions and, and whether those actions again be apparently hidden. And free ourselves from evil creeds. And this is the deen of Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for Muhammad and his ummah. Now, and so this is what the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chose for his ummah. I had to establish the affair of deen by way of that message. And it's a, and it's a message which is Amma Shamil. It's a message which is يعني, general and comprehensive. And so it's not like any of the messages that came previously. From the Anbiya Muslim. And thereafter, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad Abdul Wahab wants to mention, وَرَفْتَرَضَ اللَّهَ تَعَاتُهُ عَلَى جَمِيعَ الثَّقَلَيْنَ الْجِنِ وَالْإِنسِ وَدْلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ يَلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا And this obedience to Allah Ta'ala was made an obligation upon all of the thakalain, the two types of creation, the jinn and the mankind. And the proof of that is the statement of Allah Ta'ala. O mankind, indeed I am a messenger to all of you. And so this ayah here, and this is the ayah that we mentioned yani at the beginning of the text as well. This ayah in of itself is a proof that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi was sent to all of mankind. And the refutation of those that falsely claim that the Nabi Alayhi Salatu Salam was a messenger for just Arab. There's something you hear. Where you have someone they can't deny his message, Alayhi Salatu So except so rather, than, so rather than deny his message, 
what they do is they seek to uh, state that the message is not for them. And say that he's rather he's a messenger to the Arab. However, Allah Ta'ala mentions this ayah. I instructed the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Qul, yani qul ya Muhammad. Qul ya ayyuhan nasu inni Rasulullah alaykum jamia. Yani say, O oh mankind, indeed I am a Messenger of Allah to all of you. So the khitab, the address is to all of mankind. And it's not, the, the address wasn't ya ayyuhal Arab. O oh Arabs, indeed I am a Messenger of Allah to you. And this is what is distinct in terms of the Risal of the Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. And the other messengers, they were sent to specific nations now. However, this message from the Nabi alayhi salatu was was for all of mankind. And so, likewise, you have the hadith found in Bukhari Muslim. When the Nabi alayhi salatu was also he mentioned, بَعْثَ قُلُ النَّبِي إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ خَاصًا وَبُعْثَ قُلُ النَّبِي إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ خَاصًا وَبُعْثَ إِلَىٰ النَّاسِ عَامًا يعني every prophet was sent to his people specifically whilst I was sent to mankind in general again a rejection of the claim that he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was only sent na'am to the Arab. Na'am. And likewise, the Nabi, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, he mentions in the narration found in Bukhari Muslim. Wallahi. لا يسمع به أحد من هذه الأمة يعني referring to the يهود النصارى to no one hears of me يعني from these nations right from يهود النصارى ثم يموت ولم يؤمنوا بالذي جئت به and then they die whilst they did not believe in that which I came with إلا كان من أصحاب النار Except that he's from the inhabitants of the hellfire. I refer to the fact that if the Prophet has come with this, uh, this affair of deen and revelation to all of mankind, not one individual can say that they heard this message and did not believe in it, except that it said that they are from the inhabitants of the hellfire. And thereafter, it mentioned that Allah Ta'ala completed the deed with the ayah, Al-Yawm Akmantu Lakum Deenakum Atmantu Alaykum Ni'mati Wa Raditu Lakum Islam Adina. And Allah Ta'ala completed the deed with him by way of those, by way of those, the ayah, that ayah, that today, I perfected my religion for you and created my favorite upon you, chosen Islam as your religion. And likewise, Allah Ta'ala mentions the proof for his death. In the Kamiyat and in the Hummayyatun, Thumma in the Kabyom al Kiyamati, in the Rabbi Kuntaktasimun. Allah Ta'ala mentions in relation to the proof of the death of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. That indeed, you will die. And they will die. And then, on your al Qiyamah, you'll be sent before your Lord, I disputing or I disputing or seeking to argue your points. And so, with this eye, as we mentioned, in regards to the affair of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam being sent with this ayah of the deen being complete. Then we affirm this. 
And within this as well is a rejection of any newly invented practice. Why? Because you cannot add anything to something that is perfect. You can't bring any addition to perfection. So if the deen has been, if the deen of Allah Ta'ala has been established upon perfection, then you cannot add to perfection. It's impossible. And so any addition to that, then we know that that addition in of itself is the khalal. The addition itself is the deficiency. And it's impossible that anything else is the deficiency of Allah Ta'ala's best. Now, and likewise, the ayah referring to the death of the Prophet as well. And this again is a proof and a refutation of those that reject that the Messenger of Allah will die. Or well, they still believe that he's alive. And they hold this belief in order to call upon him. They hold the belief so they can call upon him, saying that he's still alive or he hears. And you find this amongst those, Muntasibil al Islam, those that are individuals that ascribe to Islam. And they will say that the Prophet Sallallahu he hears our du'as, for example. Or they will say that they've left his chair for the Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasalam and he will come and attend. Now, all of these from the superstitious beliefs that they, these individuals hold. And all of these things, no doubt, are affairs that we reject in the reality. And this is the reality of you know, what we believe in relation to that. And inshallah, we'll conclude with that point there. And in the next lesson, we'll go on to discuss some of the final points of this affair of the deen of Islam. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakum ala khaira. Wa sallallahu wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. No, thanks for that. Um, what advice would you give to some of the brothers who uh, had their family and want them to say like fifty months before they make it up? So advice to the brother whose family wants him to stay fifty months, for example. Um it's always when someone advising with something, so let's say for example the family is advising you to save X amount of money. You have to understand essentially where they're coming from. Right, what is the basis behind their advice? Is the basis behind their advice um, one where it's attached to the dunya? Then of course they need dawah. They need to be they need to advise about dunya. Is it a, is it a case of it's a genuine anxiety or concern, let's say, about not having to come back then you advise based upon that. So it's, it's really based upon what, where the person is coming from. So if it's, let's say, for example, it's just a case of dunya. No? And so they say, we need, I, want to, I want to save this amount of money because I want to live the, 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 most, uh, the most comfortable life when, I, when I'm in Hijra. I want to be as comfortable as possible. Which there's no harm in that. And there's no edge to some extent. Why? Because no doubt from the things that we desire are spacious homes. And one of the things that I also mentioned is that with the rijal, what we seek from, from the men, what we seek from our wives, generally speaking, is that they are within the homes and they're within the safety of their homes. And this is something that is praiseworthy when the, when the, when the woman uh, remains within the home. As is mentioned in the narration regarding Um Salama, where it's mentioned that she did not leave the home except in the kafim, except in, when she was shouted for her funeral. Allah if now you're saying 
you know, we really we want our, our, our wives to remain within the homes. However, this home is going to be the, the size of a cupboard. But we want them to remain within the home. It's not a, it's not a balanced view. At the same time, it's not a balanced view for them to say we need to save X amount of money so we have a mansion. We have to when we go, we have to have a, we have to live in a mansion. Even though now we live in a council flat and we're, com- we're comfortable, when we go there, we have to live in a mansion. Now, I'm, and so if it's now the, the 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 driving force behind it is dunya, then they need to be advised about the the, the kima of the dunya, that the dunya itself is lacks value. So why would you put yourself in jeopardy remaining in this land to save more money in order to make hijra? Whilst when you when you really understand the nature of this, this land that we're in and lands like these, that not it can't be a case of you go at any day without harm. Every day is going to bring about some harm. Whether you see it initially or you don't, there's going to bring about harm for, for a person. So a person needs to relieve themselves of that as quickly as possible. And so if, like I said, the reason is dunya, then uh, it's, uh, they need to be advised about that. If it's a genuine concern where they say we need to save X amount of money because we, I don't want to go there, have hard, fall, fall upon hard times and we have to come back. I don't want to have to come back. And it's a genuine concern and, or, or a fear of that. And so they set a particular target. That target may not be realistic, right? And so, but what is realistic is the opportunity to make hijra, generally speaking. When we think about the person's op- uh, ability to make hijra or leave the land, they have many opportunities to do so. And so they should strive to, to attain those, those opportunities or take those opportunities. If, however, um, the person is saying now that I want to, I want to make hijra, we have to have this money and I fear this. Sometimes it's just about reassuring that fear. Reassuring that, no, we don't need this amount because if we have a, a, a fraction of that, we can still live and still still be comfortable and not have to come back. And, just, and it's just about reassuring those fears that are there. Or it could be that the fears are genuine. I, that they're founded and that you do need a certain mublog, a certain amount of money that that is uh, uh, really suitable. If that's the case, then the person should strive to get that, inshallah. So it all depends on the circumstance. Is is what being is is um, what is requested and what is being now made conditional before they can go. Is it something which is uh, reasonable? If it's reasonable, then seek to fulfil it. If it's not reasonable, then it's important to try and find out why that condition is being made to being put there in the first place, and then. Seek to seek to find a, a remedy for that issue. Inshallah. Well, of people. Okay. No. Is there any difference um, regarding a Muslim and a believer, Muslim, in terms of being described in a different way? Is it similar to how the Islam and Sunnah, if they was mentioned together, the Islam and Iman, you mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, Islam and Iman. Yeah. Yeah. So, is it, is it mentioned together? It means something different. Yeah. Uh, specifically, I know when it's mentioned separately, it means no. the same thing. No, is it, is it, is it, it's the same. It's the same as the Islam Iman in terms of being mentioned together. If you mention a, a Muslim, yeah. they're generally speaking about the Muslim, and that is the Mu'min. Now, if you're mentioning them together, then the Muslim is more general. The Muslim is kullu man yantasibil al-Islam, kullu man yadhar al-Islam. Anyone that, that uh, ascribes to Islam, anyone that makes Islam apparent in the true Islam. So, for example, we wouldn't refer to uh, let's say uh, Ahmadiyya we wouldn't say that they're the Muslims nah, because what they make apparent is not Islam what they make apparent is uh, that their, their creed with this belief regard, with their, their belief regarding another prophet after Nabi so it's, it's clear kufr so we wouldn't regard them as being from the Muslim but you may have an individual that is Muslim I'd, or he makes apparent is Islam however that which he holds within is kufr that's not apparent to us I saw we're talking about, of course, the Munafiqin. So it, that's not what's apparent to us is that he's Muslim. So he'll be amongst the Muslimin. However, the Mu'minin, they are the Mu'minun, they are the individuals that truly believe in Islam. Uh, I went, this is when they mentioned together, yeah. They truly believe in Islam and adhere to Islam. 
And so the Islam is not just uh, just Zahi, but it's Zahi and Batin. And so the Mu'min is something which is more specific. Now, so essentially you have the, the, the Muslim, which is the, the wider circle, everyone that's is ascribed to Islam. The Mu'min is the one, is a smaller circle than that. Allah Allah. Barakallahu alayhi wa Not that at all. No. We affirm the death of the Prophet and, that, and, and that's that's where this is where I have to cut is and the word um it comes to meeting and realize that to Islam, then it will be in the hereafter. And him hearing us in that after. Him. Allah. Barakah. Very cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, now, nah, because the sisters leave first, inshallah, the problem is there after. Something like that. Barakah. Barakah. Barakah.